Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to Science Tree Channel and today's topic is Saturated, Unsaturated, Supersaturated and Dilution of a Solution. So in the end, we will also discuss about the types of solutions. These topics are very necessary if you want to understand that which type of solutions can affect the dilution. No doubt that polarity matters a lot. The polar solvents dissolve in polar solutes and the non-polar solutes dissolve in non-polar solvents. As we know that this is the universal rule that like dissolves like. So here we go with it. Saturated solution. So when a small amount of solute is added in a solvent or we can say that the amount of solute is not enough to accommodate all the molecules of solvent. So a very small amount of solute added in a solvent, solute dissolves very easily in the solvent. Why? Because it is less in amount. So definitely as it is less in amount, it will not take much time to dissolve in a solvent. If the addition of solute is kept on, means that we are still adding the solute, but we are adding it in intervals. We haven't added all the solute in just one time. We are adding it in small quantities in the solvent. A stage is reached when solvent cannot dissolve any more solute. And this is the stage further added, added solute remains undissolved and it settles down at the bottom of the container. The word saturated is very familiar to all of us. Why? Means that there is no more capacity. Or I can say that for example in a classroom there are number of students sitting and there is no more chairs available. So I will say that this class is already saturated and we don't have more space for the other students. So the word saturated means that the capacity is full, the capability is full. Now there is no more capacity for any other thing. And here we all know that we are talking about with the solutes and solvents. So in case of solutes we all know that the small amount of things or we can say that the small amount of uh, substances which are present in the solution is known as solute and the thing which is present in the large quantity is known as solvent. So common example or we can say that the common equation for saturated solution is solute plus solvent will give you the solution. But in this case enough amount of solute is already present in the solvent and solvent don't have any more capacity for the more solute. So it's all about saturation, it's all about completion, it's all about no more capacity. The word saturated means that the amount of solute which is required is enough in the solution to make it concentrated and we don't need any more solute according to the capability of a solvent. Solvent have no more capability to dissolve more solute in it. So this is saturated solution. So by definition a very simple uh, sentence is that a solution containing maximum amount of solute at a given temperature is called saturated solution. Now here you don't have to forget to say at a given temperature. Why? Because we know that temperature affects solubility. No doubt if I increase the temperature the solubility will gonna increase. So here in case of a saturated solution we use the word at the given temperature the amount of solute which is dissolved in solution and that is enough to uh, accommodate the capability of a solvent is known as saturated solution. 
and if i discuss it on the particle level so a saturated solution is the one in which undissolved solute is in equilibrium with the dissolved solute like in an equation form solute crystallized solute dissolved means how can we uh, come to know that we have prepared a saturated solution so practically we will come to know that if i am dissolving a sugar in a water so i will add one spoon in a glass definitely it will going to dissolve in it then i add one more spoon it will also dissolve in it but a time comes when i am still adding the spoons of sugar still adding the spoons of sugar a time comes that the sugar will no more dissolve into the water and that is the time in which the crystals of the sugar will settle down why because they are not getting soluble into the water so that's why that's the stage at which we comes to know that this is the saturated solution we can say that at this stage dynamic equilibrium is established so what is dynamic equilibrium and the equilibrium which develops between the moving things the two types of equilibriums dynamic equilibriums and static equilibriums so in most of the chemical reaction but always in fact we use the dynamic equilibriums as the reactants are changing into products and the products are changing into reactants in case of reversible reactions as well although the solution and crystallization continues at a given temperature but the net amount of the dissolved solutes remains constant that's the point which we have to memorize that the net amount of the dissolved solute remains constant and the next very important solution is unsaturated solution and the word un makes us totally opposite it's totally opposite to that of saturated solution there is a capacity there is a capability to dissolve more solute into the solvent to make a solution so a solution which contains lesser amount of solute means that solute is not still enough to accommodate all the particles of solvent the capacity is still available then that which is required to saturate at a given temperature again we are talking about the given temperature because temperature affects solubility so that is unsaturated solutions such solutions have the capacity to dissolve more solute to become a saturated solution we can also say that the unsaturated solution can also form saturated solutions later on now the next is super saturated solution and the word super means more power to it and that power is given by temperature again temperature is a very important factor in case of super saturated solution the solution that is more concentrated than a saturated solution is called super saturated solution now we all know from the previous slides that the word saturated means there is no more capacity there is no more capability so the word super means how the more capacity is produced or we can say that how the capability will be increased so the capability will be increased by means of temperature to dissolve more and more solute in the solvent now when saturated solutions are heated they develop further capacity to dissolve more solute so we can say that such solutions contain greater amount of solute then is required to form a saturated solution and no doubt they will become more concentrated now the super saturated solutions are not very stable because they depends upon temperature 
only temperature is the factor which changed them from saturated solutions to super saturated solutions the power of super is being given by temperature so the fact is that when temperature get lowers or it decreases what going to be happened again all the extra solute which dissolve into the solvent due to the temperature will settles down and again the solution changes into saturated solution so that's something different therefore an easy way to get a super saturated solution is to prepare a saturated solution at high temperature and again it is then cooled to a temperature where excess solute crystallizes out and leaves behind a saturated solution so we can increase the capability of a saturated solution by heating but the process goes on until the temperature is present when temperature decreases it settles down all the solute all the extra solute settles down now here we have very good example of super saturated solution for example we have taken a sodium thiosulfate in water now the temperature is fixed at 20 celsius how much amount of super saturated solution or we can say how much amount of sodium thiosulfate will dissolve in 100 cm cube of water at 20 celsius so memorize this figure everything goes around it 20.9 grams so this is basically the amount of sodium thiosulfate which dissolves in 100 cm cube of water at 20 celsius or we can say 20 degree now less than this amount of salt in 100 cm cube of water at 20 celsius what it will be it will be unsaturated means more capacity more capability okay more capability to dissolve the solute because the amount of solute is less than 20.9 grams and 20.9 grams of sodium thiosulfate is the capability is the capacity to dissolve in 100 cm cube of water less than that unsaturated solution now you are very well familiar with this process that if the amount of sodium sulfate is more than 20.9 g what gonna be happened it will becomes super saturated because at 20.9 grams it is saturated solution less than that unsaturated more than that it will be super saturated so in this way we can understand that how even with one solution we are able to prepare super saturated saturated and unsaturated solutions now here are two very important terminologies dilution of a solution or we can say that dilute solutions and concentrated solutions so what are the dilute solutions dilute solutions are those which contain relatively small amount of dissolved solute in the solution as in this picture it is clear that in all the glasses the color of solute is changed it means that from the lighter to the darker from the small amount of solute to the more amount of solute if we have small amount of solute in more solvent then it is dilute solution by increasing the amount of solute we are moving towards the concentrated solutions and the second term is concentrated solution concentrated solutions are those which contain relatively large amount of dissolved solute in the solution it means that solute is present in much more amount as compared to in dilute solutions 
like a very common example is brine which i will give you in the next slide here we have some examples related to dilute solutions and concentrated solutions brine a very important term used in chemistry for salt in water yes just salt in water but more amount of salt brine is a concentrated solution of common salt in water addition of more solvent will dilute the solution and its concentration decreases now 0.5 gram sodium hydroxide solution is dilute solution as compared to 1 molar sodium hydroxide solution so more the amount of solute more will be the concentration here we have a very renowned term used for water universal solvent yes why it is a universal solvent because it dissolves majority of the compounds present in earth crust majority of the compounds as it is polar so no doubt it loves to dissolve polar things in it it has hydrogen bonding in it and that hydrogen bonding makes it so unique so water is a universal solvent due to its solubility power due to its dissolving power as it dissolves more and more substances in it now it's all about solutes solvents and solutions so what do you think solution is just something liquid into liquid like we can say that milk into water or water into milk or we can say that gas into a liquid or solid into a liquid yes these are some solutions which are quite famous in our kitchen and all around us but there are nine types of solutions depending upon physical states of solute and solvent let's discuss them so here we have what a wonderful feeling having number of solutions around us like here gas into gas let's discuss it air yes we have nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and so many other elements mixed with each other having a wonderful mixture of having a wonderful solution of gas into gas so mixture of hydrogen and helium in weather balloons then mixture of nitrogen and oxygen both are gases in cylinders for respiration processes the second one is gas into liquid so what is all about gas into liquid means gas is a solute and liquid is a solvent very common oxygen in water carbon dioxide in water and the number 3 is gas into solid so it's not that much common but it is used in industries and in chemistry or in other labs like hydrogen is a gas so definitely it's not easy to capture it so we absorb it on palladium which is an element to carry out the processes most of the times so here hydrogen is a gas and absorbed on palladium which is an element so that's why it's a solution of gas into solid then the number 4 is liquid into gas now here liquid is a solute and it is dissolved into gas pollutants present in air mist fog fog which we used to see in the winters yes that is liquid into gas then liquid into liquid a very common thing in our kitchens and in chemistry labs alcohol in water and benzene in toluene then liquid into solid butter and cheese solid into gas yes smoke in air solid into liquid sugar in water and the last but not the least solid into solid what is it metal alloys where it used 
Yes, we use it in artificial jewellery, where two metals combine together to give a wonderful ornament. Brass and bronze are the basically basically metals which combine together to give to form different ornaments. So this is all about the solutions, solutes, and solvents. Thank you so much. For more videos, keep watching. Have a great day.